Welcome back to Biff Mini Bytes video series where we like to take five minutes to discuss each of the most important CFP exam topics. I'm Mike Long from the Boston Institute of Finance and in this Mini Byte we're going to take a, a look at FDIC deposit insurance and this is something I think we all feel we know something about. At least we might know there's $250,000 of coverage. But as you get into the details, you realize that there are some nuances that you, you might ha not have known before. So let's take a look at a few things. This first two lines are very, very important for us to understand in applying FDIC insurance. And that is that the amount is 250, 250,000 per depositor per insured bank for each account ownership category. And that's the biggie. That's the biggie to understand for a client and also for the national CFP exam. And you're probably aware that this coverage is provided only for deposit accounts at the bank. It's not for investments such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, life insurance, annuities. Those are not FDIC insured. We're looking for the deposit accounts like checking, savings, CDs, those type of things. It's really all about the ownership categories and we'd want to sort this out pretty quickly in an exam question. There are eight categories listed at FDIC, but for our purposes here, we're gonna focus on those, those first four. Uh, be aware of the other ones and if you have clients to which it pertains, you'd certainly wanna study it. But we're gonna look at those top four because it's the most, uh, the most common ones a CFP practitioner would work with. Single accounts, pretty easy to understand, one person, one account, but it also includes some other things. It would include, uh, what's a good one? Oh, a doing business as account. Maybe that owner is a small business owner and maintains a separate checking account at the bank for the business. Well, in the eyes of FDIC, that owner's personal deposit accounts and that doing business as account is one account and it would have 250 across all of those uh, type of accounts. The next big one is joint accounts and this is an important one for the exam to break down and see how many different people we have joint accounts within in the problem. Uh, it could be spouses as joint owners. It might be, uh, I might have a joint account with three children. So we need to look at that. But what happens if we were analyzing my accounts, I might have six joint accounts with different people. But for my side of the $250,000, all six of those would be combined as joint ownership. And I would have 250,000 across all of my portion of joint accounts. Also for uh, certain retirement accounts, uh, like IRAs, a client might have a traditional IRA, might have a Roth IRA, might have a SEP account, might have a simple IRA. All of those would be combined and one $250,000 amount would apply to the, the total. And then finally, revocable trust accounts. And this is, this is interesting because it works a little differently. This one is based on the number of unique beneficiaries. So if I have a revocable trust account, that's one owner, three beneficiaries. So the math is one owner times three beneficiaries times $250,000 FDIC insurance. So that account could have $750,000. So you can see just in these very common types of accounts that one individual could have significantly more than $250,000 of insured FDIC insured funds at a singular bank. So you wanna sort out how many different banks are we talking about in this question for the exam. Don't be fooled by uh, a main branch and then two other branches in different cities of the same bank. That's considered one insured bank. It has to be a completely separate entity. And then pay attention to what is a deposit account in the problem versus an investment account. And then how many different uh, unique ownership categories we have. It's almost like dealing cards. You deal out eight for the eight forms of ownership and then start breaking them into their respective stacks and go to work on sorting out the amount because you'll just be asked what's the total amount insured or for this person or that person. Well, thanks for listening. The full mini bite series and other great study resources, including our Biff Bites 
podcasts can be found at biffbites.com. We hope you check them all out and enjoy using them. Study on, my friends.